for organizers uh, uh, for the uh, opportunity to speak in this wonderful conference. And uh, what I would like to do today is basically to try to tell you a bit about some of, of our recent theoretical work on uh, trying to understand some of the fascinating properties of uh, graphene and uh, uh, graphene-based uh, nanostructures. Uh, before I begin, let me uh, acknowledge uh, that the work I'm going to talk about is uh, supported by the Department of Energy uh, in the United States and also uh, the National Science Foundation and the Office of the Naval Research. So as uh, most of you know, graphene is just a single atomic layer of graphite. So why is uh, there so much interest in uh, graphene? Uh, it turns out that uh, graphene as a material is really extraordinary in many uh, respects. Uh, for example, uh, it is a truly two-dimensional crystal with a very, very few uh, effects. Uh, and if you look at this electronic behavior, it's quite exotic. That is, the interior from graphene uh, has a linear dispersion relation, so they behave uh, like uh, two-dimensional mass fermions. And because of that, they can efficiently tunnel through potential barriers and give rise to phenomena such as anomalous or poor effects and so on. And graphene as a uh, material has many excellent um, properties. For example, electronically, uh, uh, the carriers, it has a very high carrier mobility uh, at room temperature, uh, higher than any known uh, semiconductors. Uh, it has high current carrying capacity, and so on. Mechanically, uh, graphene, as in the case of carbon nanotubes, has very large Young's modulus, high tensile strength, uh, low friction. Uh, and then thermally, it is one of the best thermal conductors, as well as the best one we know, which is diamond. And what's even more uh, interesting, uh, exciting about uh, graphene is that it has excellent controllability. That is, one could tune the property of graphene by uh, doing, say, electric electrical gating or uh, structural patterning and so on. So graphene as a material is therefore very attractive from the point of view of doing fundamental physics studies and also for possible technological applications. So uh, the structure of graphene is very simple. Uh, it actually only has two atoms per unit cell forming a honeycomb structure. So the atoms A and B in the uh, unit cell actually form two interpenetrating uh, sublattices. And uh, the real zone of graphene is also very simple. It is a hexagon in momentum uh, space. Now, of course, uh, graphene is also the mother structure of many nanostructure that has been uh, fabricated and studied. Uh, this include uh, the fullerene molecules, carbon nanotubes, single and bilayered graphene, and nanostructures such as uh, nano ribbons. So in today's talk, I'm going to focus on the last three types of structure and, and related uh, systems. So this is the outline of the talk. I will begin with a very brief introduction to the physics of graphene. And then we're going to talk about electron excitation or quasi-particle excitations in graphene and, and, and see how they manifest themselves in an angle result for the emission experiments. And then we'll move on to discuss uh, some of the rather unusual electronic, magnetic, and optical property of graphene nanorivers. Uh, next, then we talk about some rather peculiar behavior, uh, at least directly predicted, for graphene uh, in the presence of a uh, nanoscale, slowly very periodic uh, potential, we call those graphene superlattices. And then we move on to look at the photophysics of graphene and bilayer graphene. Uh, it turns out to be dominated by excitons, even at room temperature. And then if I have time, look at charge transport through graphene very violently. 
and the existence of uh, a transport gap in some of those uh, green boundaries. So now, graphene is uh, unique, uh, at least electronically, uh, in uh, the fact that uh, it has, if you look at the low energy electronic state, it actually has a linear dispersion relation. That is, the band structure is dictated by an occupied pi band and an empty uh, pi star band. And those two bands touch each other at two inequilibrium points in the Brion zone. And so you look at the, the low energy electronic states, then they correspond to two cones, one inverted, touching each other. And the place at which the, the two cones touch, we call that the direct uh, point. So if you look at this uh, band uh, dispersion, then it's equivalent to that of a relativistic uh, band uh, dispersion relation with the zero mass. So the band velocity here plays the very important physical role of uh, the, 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 the role of speed of light play in relativistic physics. So that's why we call this a two-dimensional massless direct linear uh, system. In fact, this band structure of graphene has been known for, for a long time, since 1947. And uh, people in the southern nanotube community, in fact, have used this property of graphene to understand many of the properties of carbon nanotubes. However, this uh, band structure and the isolation of a single layer of graphene uh, was not done until about five years ago by uh, the, the, the two pioneers who uh, indicated here. So if you do a, a standard band structure calculation such as those based on density functional theory, what you find is the band velocity in fact is too small by uh, 30%. And this is, uh, you will see later, due to a, a very strong uh, many electron effects in graphene because you in a reduced dimensional uh, system. I'll come back to this uh, later. Now, in terms of experimental progress, that's have been uh, uh, a lot, huge amount in, in the last few years. As I mentioned, a uh, uh, single layer of uh, graphene has now been routinely uh, <coughs> isolated and measured, and this kind of measure can, measurements confirm the behavior of the system uh, like that of a 2D massless direct linear. System. What's even more exciting is now people with researchers able to do nanoscale patterning of graphene, for example, making nano ribbons and, and so on. And finally, the growth of wafer size, uh, single and multi layer graphene on various substrates has also been uh, achieved. Uh, another uh, unique property of the electronic structure of graphene is that in addition to the linear dispersion relation, there's a new quantum number we call a pseudo-spin associated with each of the electronic states. And the spinner is pointed either along uh, a line or anti-aligned uh, with the wave vector of the electronic state. And the orientation of this pseudo-spin is actually, in fact, tell you about the bonding character between the two atoms in the unit cell. In, in graphene. So for example, if for a state, uh, the, 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 the pseudo spin is formed along the k vector, then that corresponds to a bonding state. Then for, for, for a state with well, a pseudo spin pointing uh, anti, uh, 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 along the wave vector would correspond to a, a anti-bonding state. Uh, and, uh, so so you, this state would be bonding and this state would be anti-bonding. And, and for slowly varying potential, you cannot really take a bonding state to an anti-bonding state, and, and therefore a backscattering in fact is suppressed in, in graphene, and that is the reason why in fact uh, uh, carbon metallic carbon nanotubes are such good uh, conductors. It's due to this chiral nature of the wave function of graphene. Now, the, a, a very direct <coughs> way of, of, of smoking the uh, band structure of a material, of course, is through uh, uh, angle result full emission. So these are some data that is uh, uh, 
taken by uh, my colleagues at Berkeley on uh, graphene uh, and dope uh, with different uh, level of uh, electron doping. So you see that there's a nice uh, linear uh, band dispersion uh, relation there. And in fact, if you uh, measure very carefully of the line width, you can also learn something about the lifetime of the party hole that's created in the photon machine as well. Now, we would like to understand uh, this measure uh, angle result for the emission uh, spectral function and therefore learn something about the party particle excitation in graphene. Now, as you know, when, when you create a particle in a uh, interacting many body system, uh, that excited particle would interact with all the other excitation in the system and it would apply a self energy and therefore uh, uh, it, uh, this interaction will be normalized that the energy dispersion relation and give rise to a lifetime to the body particle. So in order to understand the photo emission experiment, uh, that is uh, understand the spectral wave function, we need to calculate the sub-energy due to uh, many body interactions in the system. For the case of graphene, we would expect that uh, electron-electron interaction and electron phonon interaction would be the dominant terms and give rise to the sub-energy. So that's what we have done. We basically carry out calculations for the self-energy of the positive particles in graphene. Uh, for electron-electron interaction, we use the GW method. And then uh, for the electron-phonon interaction, we make use of the standard mixed up uh, approximation. For the experts in the audience, uh, this is basically carried out uh, using uh, first principles methods so that you know it adjustable parameters in calculation. And so let me just show you some results, in particular related to this uh, band velocity that I talked about earlier. So if you do a DFT calculation, what you find is the band velocity of graphene is only 0.85 uh, in units of 10 to the 6 meter per second, uh, meter per second. And you see that that's significantly different from the experiment. So what we find is that many uh, body interactions give rise to a very large band velocity renormalization in this system. Electron-electron interaction, in fact, increases the band velocity by uh, 30%, and electron-phonon interaction uh, tends to decrease it by about 5%. And because there are many body interactions, so screening is, is important. Uh, in fact, doping and, and substrate screening to graphene, in fact, will also play a role and, and make changes in the order of 10%. So you see that this variation in the experiment is actually real, depending on what substrate the experiment is carrying out, the total level, and so on. And also the self-energy calculations, in fact, explain also the observed light with an angular result for the emission. Uh, I, I will not have time to talk about it here today. Now let me turn to graphene nanoribbons. Uh, so suppose you, you cut a piece of graphene into a ribbon, then you can imagine you could cut it in different sizes, different width, and have different edge shape. So what we and other people have found over the last few years is that nano ribbons are really interesting uh, 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 structures. Uh, they have many uh, rather unusual properties. For example, unlike the case of uh, carbon nanotubes, which can be metals or some semiconductors, all common uh, homogeneous edge graphene nanoribbons are, are predicted to be uh, semiconductors. And in fact, the band gap scales like one of the width of the ribbon, and it's in the order of one electron mole for width in the order of few nanometers. And you can put in uh, many, many electron effects that I discussed earlier. And it turns out that many electron effects, at least at the GW level, is really important. It, it increases the band gap by a factor of two or three, uh, depending on which level you're looking at. In fact, this prediction has been very recently confirmed by a uh, measurement by Hong Ki Dai School at Stanford. Another very interesting thing we find is that for certain type of ribbon, we saw so for zigzag edge uh, nano ribbons, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, uh, we find that that you could make the system 
uh, this ribbon into a half metal by applying a transverse uh, electric field. So in this state, this, the, 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 the carriers are 100% spin polarized and it's tunable by the electric field. So this could be quite interesting uh, in terms of possible uh, application uh, involving spin generation and injection. And finally, we find that the optical response uh, of graphene nano ribbons is, is, all, is dominated by exciton, similar to the case of carbon nanotubes, except the wave function, the character of the exciton in, in the ribbons are actually quite different from that of uh, nanotubes. I won't have time to talk about all this. Let me just give you one example. This is a case of the so-called zigzag uh, edge graphene nano ribbons. So this is a little ribbon that has an edge that looks like a zigzag, <coughs> and then the, the sigma dangling bonds are capped by uh, add atoms. So in, in, in our calculation, we use hydrogen. And what you find is that for this ribbon, that there are edge states at uh, the Fermi level. Very uh, fact dispersion, and those edge states lead to a anti-ferromagnetic ground state, and, and the system becomes a uh, semiconductor with a, a sizable gap for a ribbon in the order of a, nano, a few nanometer width. And the states, the bands near the band edge, are in fact edge state bands. There are two bands here. Uh, one band with electrons localized on one that edge, and then another band with the electrons localized on the other edge. So the electrons are ferromagnetically coupled along the edge, and then anti-ferromagnetically coupled uh, across the width of the ribbon. So you end up with a, a magnetic, anti-magnetic, uh, uh, insulated uh, ground state. And um, suppose you put this ribbon uh, in a transverse electric field, say in a split gauge geometry, what one find is that the pi electric field in fact split the spin up and spin down degeneracy for the, 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 the edge state bands right here. And it pushes uh, states of one spin type into the gap and spins of another uh, uh, orientation away from the gap. Uh, and at some critical uh, field, then the, the bands overlap and you have a metal. And at that point, you would have a half metal or the carrier uh, have the same uh, spin orientation. And in fact, we don't have to wait till uh, this point. We could uh, uh, dope or gate the system at a smaller uh, applied field, and they still would have a, a half metal. So this is uh, quite an interesting phenomenon because you could control and tune the spin uh, by a uh, high electric field. And the phenomenon is related to the fact that and when you apply this field, there's a potential drop or across the, 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 the ribbon, and therefore uh, you can move the edge states uh, of different spin polarization. So, in, so you now have a, a, a state which is 100% spin polarized. Uh, it's tunable and reversible by reversing the electric field. And then because the phenomenon is related to the potential drop across the ribbon, uh, for a given field strength, is more effective uh, for wider uh, ribbons. And uh, the question is really, can you make those uh, nano ribbons? When we first uh, did our work, we suggested that perhaps you could use uh, uh, mechanical or electron or ion beam techniques to make ribbons, or somehow use some kind of chemical route to make ribbons, or splitting a single wall carbon nanotube to get ribbons. Uh, in fact, uh, in the last uh, couple of years, research have, uh, uh, in the field has uh, done all three uh, cases. And uh, for example, these uh, are some data from a uh, Hongji Dice group using a chemical mean to form the ribbons. And they could get ribbons with width uh, less than 10 nanometer uh, of different uh, width. In fact, uh, using their ribbons, they could measure the band gap as a function of the the ribbon width, and in fact, agrees quite well with our uh, theoretical uh, predictions. Uh, also, very recently, about a year ago, uh, people were able to split uh, uh, multi wall and single wall uh, nanotubes and get a uh, nano ribbon with a width in order of a few nanometer and very, very 
uh, straight edge. And STM uh, measurements have shown that those edges can be as straight as the cartoon right here. It's atomically uh, straight. Now we turn to the, to the next uh, topic I would like to discuss, which is uh, graphene in the presence of some nanoscale uh, external periodic uh, potential. Uh, we started this work as a matter of curiosity, but it turns out that nowadays people could indeed uh, put uh, nanoscale patterns on graphene, uh, either by some kind of a deposition technique, or if you put graphene on uh, the right type of surface, it could actually naturally form super lattices with a lattice constant in the order of few nanometers. So uh, this is just to illustrate uh, the, the, the case when you have uh, pristine graphene, so the electronic structure is given by this uh, cylindrical uh, uh, structure. And suppose now we apply a periodic potential to it, just a simple 1D atomic penny part of potential. What you find is that this uh, electronic uh, structure is now modified. But it's modified in a very unusual way. That is, if you look along the x direction, the direction of the periodicity of the potential, the, the, the band velocity uh, the band structure is totally unaffected. But if you uh, go away from the x direction, it's actually modified. It can be modified by a lot. Uh, so this is uh, some results uh, looking at the group velocity of the carrier as a function of this angle. So x is the direction of periodicity. So you see that that group velocity as a function of an angle is this behavior. It's totally unaffected. Uh, along the x direction is most affected uh, perpendicular to the x direction. So this is a very counterintuitive result because uh, when the electrons moving across the potential barriers, it's totally unaffected, totally unaffected. But when it's moved perpendicular to it or parallel to it, uh, it, it's, it changes the modes. And this is really related to the pseudo-spin physics that I talked about earlier. That is, there is no backscattering in uh, graphene uh, due to the potential. And, and the dash curve here corresponds to uh, the, the case when we take away the pseudo-spin physics. The different color curves correspond to the different uh, uh, theory of heights uh, in the calculation. Uh, what's more interesting is that if you take this uh, potential uh, profile and just tune the, 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 the potential height without changing the periodicity and look at the group velocity along the y direction and what you find is that you can tune the velocity all the way to zero. Uh, so at this potential configuration, the system actually behaves like a, a 1D massless direct fermion system. And we call this a special graphene uh, super lattices. And, uh, very similar behavior occurs when you have a 2D rectangular periodic potential also. And uh, the special graphene super lattices, in fact, has many interesting properties. One of them is that they behave like electron uh, supercollimators. That is, if you have a wave packet moving in a medium, in general, it would spread out as a function of time. But in a super, uh, special graphene super lattice, what you find it is that it doesn't spread and it's it's guided to move along the direction of the periodicity. So let me just illustrate this with uh, uh, the propagation of one ray packet in graphene and in graphene superlattice, a, a, a particular graphene superlattice, a special graphene superlattice. So you see that uh, in pristine graphene, the ray packet spread and has a spread angle about 55 degrees from this particular ray packet. And then you put the same weight packet in a special graphene super lattice, and what you find is completely uh, collimated over a uh, many, many micron uh, distance. And these are just a couple of movies that illustrate the point. Here is this pristine graphene. This is a, a, a special graphene super lattice with the, the direction of periodicity along the x direction. So in graphene, the weight packet just spread out, but in this special graphene super lattice, it goes like that. And uh, you could uh, move the 
started out the weight packet to move in a direction that away from the direction of periodicity. Now, in graphene, of course, you have an isotropic system, nothing uh, changed. But in, in this special graphene super lattice, you still guide it to move along that uh, the direction of periodicity, even though there's no physical uh, uh, guide, uh, uh, wave guide in the system. So as far as we know, this is the first system that solves this kind of super collimation uh, effect for electrons. And you might ask, now, now you, this is a perfect periodic system, suppose you make an experiment, and of course you're going to have some disorder in it. So how, how would disorder affect uh, this uh, particular phenomenon? And what we, fi what we find is that this is very robust. So what we have done, some uh, calculation is intentionally put in disorder, and we're going to characterize, characterize the disorder in terms of this thickness variation on the very high RMS values divided by the, the, the period disability length. And you, we find that even up to this disorder parameter of uh, 50%, you find that uh, that this super collimation effect can continue to exist and it's very, very robust. Um, another thing we find for this kind of uh, graphene super analysis is that under the right conditions, you could actually get new generation of massless direct fermions. For example, you put in a hexagonal graphene uh, super, uh, potential, uh, super lattice potential in graphene, what you find is now the band structure looks like this. This is the original direct cone. And what you find now is that there are now additional direct cones occurring at different places. You have this mini uh, cones occurring. <coughs> and at each of these mini cones, you have a linear dispersion relation, and you have a new set of uh, fermion, uh, the massless direct fermions. And this is the, the calculated density state so the dash curve is for pristine graphene. So you see that now at a different energy, you're going to have, you have also a, a region over which you have zero density state and a linear increase in the density state away from that region. So if you uh, gain or dope the system to this new energy, then you could explore the physics of this new sets of new generation of uh, direct uh, massless direct fermions. Another thing we find is for a specific graphene superlattices, you could actually get new branches of direct fermions at uh, uh, zero energy at the neutrality point. Uh, so let me just show you one example. This is a, a superlattice. And uh, at a weak uh, potential, you have one uh, direct cone upon. But then when you increase the potential to, to a certain point, you actually now get three. Every one, you can end up with three, and so you have a, uh, the number of, uh, a jump in the number of direct cones, and, and, and so on. So that could be quite interesting in terms of modifying the transport property of the system. Now, what happens when you, instead of an electrostatic potential, you put in a vector potential or magnetic field in the system? It comes out that because of the structure of the Hamiltonian of graphene, there's a, there's a relationship between an electric field and a magnetic field. So we have discovered that, that we could make a transformation, there's a transformation that takes a 1D magnetic profile to an electric uh, profile, field profile. So that means whatever problem you do in the electric uh, field uh, configuration, there's an equivalent one in the magnetic field configuration, and you will learn uh, the, uh, uh, one system by doing uh, a study on another system, uh, on the, on the other system. Uh, so, but the, the, the behavior is, is quite different uh, in a magnetic uh, graphene superlattice. So let me just give you one example. This is a case uh, where you have an alternate magnetic field uh, coming out of the, the magnetic uh, of the graphene system. So the net flux is equal to zero that, in fact, you could map this into an electric field situation. And what we find is that in this magnetic graphene super lattice, the, 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 the band structure is completely isotropic. There's no gap. And uh, unlike the case of uh, a magnetic, uh, alternating magnetic field in a 2D electron gas, the, 
the, the, the velocity to do this, that they are normalized isotropically, even though that you have this anisotropic uh, uh, structure in the system. And the velocity is always reduced. In fact, there's a really long remedial uh, uh, tra uh, transport uh, uh, effect that goes on. Uh, so let me, since I only have five more minutes, let me skip uh, some of uh, this magnetic field stuff and then talk about the optical spectrum of graphene. Uh, a few years ago, we predicted the exotonic system, magnetic carbon nanotubes. So the question is, are there something interesting in, uh, the, in graphene in a kind of a semi metallic uh, system? So we have been looking at the optical response of graphene and bilayer graphene and also graphene and nano -rhythms. So in order to calculate the, the optical response, in addition to this sub-energy uh, uh, effect that we have to put in, we now have to put in an electron hole interaction uh, uh, effects. And, and so we have done that through uh, the beta salt gate equation uh, uh, method. And so let me just show you um, one result that we get out for uh, pristine graphene. So this is the calculated absorption as a function of photon energy. And the blue curve is the calculation without electron hole interaction, and the red curve is <coughs> electron hole interaction. It turns out that graphene, if you look at its absorbance at low frequency, it's just equal to pi times alpha, where alpha is the fine structure constant uh, of nature. So, and this result, in fact, is completely due to the linear band dispersion relation, and it's independent of the electron hole interaction. However, at higher frequency, what one finds is that electron hole interaction is actually very important. Uh, when you turn that on, it suppresses this uh, interband transition uh, when whole singularity, <coughs> and then a new peak occur with a rather asymmetric uh, uh, profile, and that's due to a, a resonant uh, exoton. And because it's in resonance with the continuum, they give you an interesting uh, fan of uh, line shape. And um, so when we first got out this result, there were no experimental data on it, and we talked to Hong Kong behind, and he said, indeed, he has found something similar uh, looking like that. And very recently, there's a paper by uh, uh, under Gein's uh, group, and this is the measure of the result, the, 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 the green and the black curve compared to our red and the, and the blue curve. The red curve is with the electron moment actually included. So you see that there are very, very good agreement in terms of not only the position of the peak, but also the line shape, indicating that there are really strong electron moment action effects in this metallic um, system. And uh, we look at the uh, bilayer graphene, and, and again, looking at the absorption as a function of frequency, we see that when you turn on the electron hole interaction, there is again this shift in the parent peak, and the shift power is smaller than that the case of uh, single layer graphene. And then, of course, you can look at graphite itself, infinite number of layers. And, and again, the red curve is with electron hole interaction. So you still see, even for the graphite, there's a shift, but it's lot smaller, and the red curve is uh, the black curve is experiment. So if you look at uh, going from graphite to bilayer graphene to uh, graphene, you see that there's a apparent shift in the peak position go from around 0 0.27 to 0 0.45, 0 0.6. Average rate how important dimensionality, dimensionality is to this kind of many uh, electron uh, effects, uh, electron hole interaction. Uh, another thing I like to talk about is uh, graphene, bilayer graphene in a uh, presence of a transverse uh, electric field. It turns out that bilayer graphene is a metal, a semi metal. But if you apply electric field to it, it actually could be made into a semiconductor, and the gap can be tuned all the way from zero to a quarter electron volt. 
So that's very exciting because just turning a knob, you can turn the gap from all a, a material. And uh, so, so we uh, we have looked at the optical property of this uh, system because you could imagine you could now have tunable uh, excitons in the system. And in fact, that's exactly the case. This is the size of the exciton, the electron hole correlation amplitude. Uh, and as a function of applied field, so that you increase the gap, you make the size of the exon smaller. And the character of the exon here is very interesting. I won't have time to talk about it. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the excitation energy we calculated, in fact, would be very well for a recent experiment. So let me, uh, and then uh, the case of uh, nano ribbons, again, you have very strong excitonic effects. And here, uh, the exciton binding energy is even as large as uh, half the electron volt, uh, so it's huge. And uh, in terms of transport through gray boundary, what we find here is that there are two distinct classes. One is that one kind of gray boundary you would have trans perfect transmission. Another kind, you actually have perfect refraction with a sizable gap. Uh, if you're interested, I could talk to you question about the physics behind this. But this is quite interesting because it tells you that perhaps you could use grain boundary to create a gap in the system to, for application. So let me skip the summary and just acknowledge all my excellent collaborator of, uh, that uh, involved with the work that I talk about uh, today. And the name is Mr. Thank you for your attention.